I am truly grateful. I believe God has something special for us. If you are a Bible connoisseur, which I'm trying to make all of you all one, you know, that you love the Word, tonight is going to be one of those nights where you're going to see some revelation in the Word that you may have not seen before, but you're going to enjoy tonight because tonight I want to talk about um, the promise is yours. Look at your neighbor and say, the promise is mine. Uh, come on, pat yourself and say, the promise is mine. Yeah, uh, here's the promise that God has given to each and every one of us, that fav the favor of God, uh, it, it, the promise is that the favor of God will be over your life in every area. Uh, I, I didn't hear somebody say amen or nothing. I, the, promises, the promise is that the favor of God is going to be in and around your life forever. God has, God, that's a promise from the Lord. Would you look at somebody and say, I am really favored by God? Yeah, and, and here's the promise. The promise is that you don't have to work for it. The promise is you don't have to do anything for it, that he loves you so much that he did it all for you. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that, that's incredible. That is that is really incredible. And, and, and I, I really don't know if we really understand what that really means, what that really means. There are so many people. I was, I was talking to somebody that I was in um, um, out of town this past uh, Monday and Tuesday, and I was talking to them, and they were talking about their relationship with the Lord and how they've been really uh, committing their lives to the Lord and how they are really trying to stay on the narrow path the right way and and, and they were digging into how how challenging it is uh, to 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 make the right decisions and do the right thing and I just told them I just looked over and said why are you wrestling so hard you know Jesus have really done it for you. Co-pastor was talking to somebody in the same thing. We were, she was on one side of the country. I was on the other side of the country just saying, do you know that Jesus has done it for you? Do you know how much freedom it is to know that Christ have paid it all for you? It is unbelievable. And not only have God blessed us, we are in particularly blessed because, first of all, that we are sitting in a grace church and God has placed you under a grace ministry so that alone is a blessing that alone is a blessing that alone is a blessing but the second part about that if I've been if you've been watching the news all the stuff that's going on all across the world and all the things that are refugees are being put out of their houses out of their country you have a right to come to a church to lift your hands and give God praise and you can go home and feed your children and go home. Man, you look at your neighbor and say, do you realize how blessed we really are? Um, because we live in a country that's always focusing us on finances. Every time we watch TV, we look at commercials to talk about the best car. And because you don't have the best car, because you don't live in the biggest house, sometimes you feel like, you, you, you know, you're underprivileged. But if you move all of that material junk out of the way and just realize how blessed you are because you have your health and your strength and that you have your right mind and, and, and that you could go to work in peace and make a decent and living. You are blessed. The favor of the Lord is up on you because he could have had you born in any third world country, but he chose for you to be born into the richest country in the nation. Look how blessed you really are. Would you just tap somebody and say, I am really blessed. Yeah. Uh, being blessed and favored doesn't mean that, that everything in your life, you're not going to have challenges and difficulties. We, we discussed that on uh, Sunday or last Thursday. Just because you're blessed doesn't mean that, that, that you're not going to have some challenges. The challenges come in your life. Everybody say, the challenges are coming to grow me. Right. If you, if you don't have any challenges, you will not grow. You will not grow. If you, you know, when you go to the gym, if you just go into the gym and, 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 and you talk on the t cell phone, while you on the treadmill, you, 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 ain't, you ain't got nothing going on. 
Amen. Amen. In order, in order for it to make you better, you're not going to be able to hold a conversation when you, when you are being made better. And sometimes when God's taking you through different things in your life, you just got to go through it because it makes you better. You're not, sometimes you can't explain it to everybody. But if you just continually to forge through it, you're going to see your spiritual self get muscles. You're going to see your faith come into action. You're going to see God do some things in your life that's going to really make you uh, appreciate uh, what you went through uh, that God is going to bless you. So I want to talk about tonight the promise is yours or the promise is mine say the promise is mine i want to show you something uh quickly in in the bible that's a mystery and and the reason i want to say that the promise is yours because i want you to know it is yours by gift it is not yours by works look at your neighbor and say it's a gift there's a there's a scripture in the bible when i was growing up that says gifts and callings are without repentance how many of y'all heard that scripture Lift your hands. Okay. How many of y'all have never heard that scripture? Raise your hand. All right. There's a scripture in the Bible that says gifts and callings are without repentance. When we were growing up in, the, in, in, our, in our church or in, the spiritual, in, in our spiritual walk, we used to teach this this way. I have a gift to play the piano. Y'all just heard me tonight. I play pretty decent. I've never taken any lessons to play a piano. It was a gift from God the day I was born. KJ is gifted to sing. God gives her that before. There's some people that are, T.D. Jakes is gifted to preach. You know, I mean, you can't go to school to be T.D. Jakes. You, you got to be gifted to be. LeBron James is a gifted basketball player. Now, you can work on your skills, but you, you, you can work. I can go to the gym and work all day, but I would never be gifted to play like LeBron. You, it, there's a gift that God gives you. So we used to say that gifts and callings are without repentance, that God gives you those gifts, and he didn't give them to you because you repented or because you were saved. He gave them to you gifts and callings without repentance. Do y'all follow me? That is the improper interpretation of that text. The gift that God is calling, that is talking about, is grace. The gift of grace is without repentance. And the call that he called you into grace had nothing to do with you. Yeah. Now, let's go to the text. I want to show you this in the text. Go with me to Romans, the 11th chapter, because this is important for you to understand what I'm talking about tonight, that the promise is yours. Because the promise did not come to you based on you. It came to you based on him. And so the favor of God is over your life because God is just crazy about you. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God's crazy about me? Now, I need you to really say that like you really mean it. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God is crazy about me? Yeah, yeah, you got, you got to say that with some swag. Look, if I look at somebody else, look with some swag and put, ladies, put the neck in it, you know. Brothers, lift your chin up and say, God is crazy about me. And because he's crazy about you, do you know what it means to have somebody who loves you like crazy? That, that he got you, that's the reason that you live in this great country, in this great country. And I'm saying he ain't crazy about the other people that live in third world countries. I, I just want to concentrate on you right now. That, that he is crazy about you. That's why you're where you're at today. He is crazy. But listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. Romans, Romans 11. Paul was talking. He says, I want you to understand this mystery. Somebody say mystery. So that means that everybody can't see this. Only a certain group of people can see this. And listen to what he says, just brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourself. In other words, don't you think that God is blessing you because of you? He's blessing you because he's chosen you. He says, some of the people of Israel, listen to this, have hardened their hearts, but this will last only until the full number of Gentiles come to Christ. What Paul is talking about is that he's talking about this dispensation of grace that God went to Israel and they rejected him. Y'all remember the Bible said that the, the stone, uh, they rejected the cornerstone, that was Jesus. He said they rejected him. He says, but don't fool yourself. God hardened their hearts 
so that they would reject him. And listen to what it says, verse 26. And so all Israel will be saved. As the scripture says, the one who rescue will come from Jerusalem and he will turn Israel away from their ungodliness, away from their unbelief. When they see him crack the sky, Israel is going to look up and say, God, there is Jesus. I'm teaching tonight. I'm going to give you some Bible stuff to learn. Okay? They're going to say, wow, there is the Messiah, the one that we've been waiting on. So they're going to believe in him. That's the ungodliness. They don't believe in the Messiah. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. Listen to what he says. And this is my covenant with them that I will take away their sins. Listen to this. Verse 28. Many of the people of Israel, read it with me, are now enemies of the good news. What is the good news? The gospel of grace. Everybody say the gospel of grace is the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. It's grace. They are enemies of the good news. Why are they enemies of the good news? Is because they don't believe in Jesus. And you can't be saved when you reject Jesus. You follow me? He says many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news. And this benefits you Gentiles. Yet they are still the people he loved because he, come on, read that. He what? He chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember when Bishop McClendon was preaching and he talked about Abraham was the one that was chosen? Abraham was chosen. God made a promise to Abraham that all of his seed would be blessed. And do you know now me and you are included in that seed, in that blessing that has been pronounced? Look at your neighbor. Say, God's promise of blessings belongs to me. Listen to what it says. Many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news, and this benefits you Gentiles. Yet they are still the people he loved because he chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for God's gifts and his callings can never be withdrawn or his gifts and callings are without repentance meaning that once god said it he can't take it back and it had nothing to do with them but because he chose them from the foundation of the world and now you and I have been included in that choosing. That's good news, people. Did y'all pick up what I just said? If you didn't understand that, raise your hand. If you understood it, raise your hand. Y'all should be shouting right now. That's a, I, I, just, I had to make sure y'all underst understood it because that's a shouting moment right there. That God chose you and gave you the gift of grace and it had nothing to do with you repenting or coming to him is the reason you were chosen that's crazy look at would you just tap yourself and say God's crazy about me that he put himself in your many times we think uh, brother storm that we found Jesus no he put himself in the way and we ran into Jesus and he loved you that much that he allowed so many things to happen into your life until it pointed you to him. Because he chose you from the foundation of the world. Would you look at your name and say, I've been chosen. The new, the new King James Version says, for gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. I, I need you to get this. Because see, now the enemy has lost its power to tell you that God's not pleased with you. Are y'all picking up? The enemy can't come and whisper in your ear that God's punishing you. Because God's saying he's not punishing his children. He loves you. You are his favorite. You're one of God's best. You, 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 you got, you, you, you're spoiled by God. That's, that's half your problem right there. Y'all been spoiled by God. You know, and y'all just pray long enough, he gives you anything you want. He do so many things, wonderful things for you. He bless y'all when y'all ain't even looking for a blessing. He turns around and do stuff for y'all that y'all some don't even realize y'all even asking for. He do stuff for y'all that y'all just spoiled by God. Anybody in here spoiled by God? 
Now watch this, verse 30. See, this is what I'm teaching you, that we've said scriptures out of context text for so long, the gifts and callings are without repentance. This has nothing to do about me preaching or singing. This has everything to do with God blessing me with the gift. By grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a... Come on, talk to me, y'all. Y'all gonna wake up from me? It is a what? It is a gift. The gift that God has called us to is the gift of grace. And it is promised to us because God said you can trust that I am not going to revoke my blessing off of your life. I wish somebody would give God praise for that. Ah, man, man. Hey, you can, you can go with, oh, okay, let's look at the text. Verse 30. Once you Gentiles were rebels against God, but when the people of Israel rebelled against him, God was merciful to you instead. Somebody shout glory. glory. And they are the rebels. Now they are the rebels. And God's mercy has come to you so that they too will share in God's mercy. Now, now watch this. He says, watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. If y'all pay attention to this, you all are going to get something out of this lesson that y'all have probably never heard preached. We have always said, and the Bible does say, that the Jews were God-chosen people. But I want you to know today that the Gentiles are too. I'm going to prove it to you. He says, I chose Israel because I wanted the Gentiles to see my favor on them. But then he gave them the law and says, now I'm going to choose the Jew, the the." Uh, the Gentiles, I chose the Jews so that you could see my favor on them. Now I'm going to choose the Gentiles so the Jews can see my favor on them. And the favor that's on us was better than the favor that was on them. And so the favor that's on us is God's what? God's grace. The favor that was on them was God's law. But it was still favor. Because they had a relationship with God. Now listen what he says. Listen what he says. Now they are the rebels. The Jews are the rebels. And God's mercy has come to you so that they too will share in God's mercy. Verse 32. Would y'all read this to, with me? Because y'all ain't going to believe this what the scripture says. What it says. Is that incredible? Did y'all catch that? He said, I put everybody in disobedience. So nobody can boast that it's because of their goodness that I have chose them. He said, you can't boast that it was your holiness, that it was your righteousness. He said, I put everybody in disobedience so that everybody could see how merciful I really am. Would you look at your name and say, he sure enough loved me. I, I could tell, I could tell, y'all ain't shouting with this with me. This is jumping all in my spirit. Because what he did, what he did is he gave us a promise of favor and blessings and it had nothing to do he chose you from the foundation of the world knowing what you would do even before you did it and he chose you anyway and he loved you anyway and he called you anyway and he has said I can't revoke my blessing off of you look at your neighbor and say that's good he's crazy about me Man, that's some good news. And listen with verse 33, and I'm going to move on. It says, oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and ways. Don't ask me why God did it that way. I have no clue, but he did it to bless you. Would you look at your neighbor? God, give them the revelation as I'm preaching that they will understand 
that the promise is theirs. It's a promise. It is not you. Let, let me say it this way. Everybody look up this way. Everybody look this way. Everybody look this way. You did not accept Jesus. He chose you. And because he chose you, he chose you with blessings and favor that he will never provoke over your life. They are yours forever. And that's why I've been preaching for the last three weeks, walk in what? Walk in favor. It belongs to you. You got to speak it. You got to act like you got favor. You got to talk like you got favor. You got to walk in areas expecting God to do what he promised he would do for you, and that's give you favor. And when you find out in your life that things are not going the way that you want them to go, he is just growing you up. That's all. He's not mad with you. He's growing you up. You got to learn to trust his heart when, you, when he's not dishing out his hand. Ooh, that was good. I said that before. And when God's hand is closed, understand that he's trying to teach you something. So glorify him even the more. Amen. All right, all right. I'm, 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 I'm teaching tonight. Did, did you all catch that? Did everybody catch that? Because I want you to get that. I want you to get that the promise belongs to you and, and, and it is yours. And you can, you can take that to the bank. It, it's keys to the car, keys to the house. As they was, if I gave you a house and I'm telling you I'm not going to take it back, then, then it's yours. The promise that God has given you about favor and grace over your life, he's the don't worry, don't let the enemy tell you that God's going to get mad with you and you're going to lose out. God is not going to let you lose out if you believe and trust that the favor is yours. Now, how do we lose out on blessings and favor? We don't believe. We don't believe. There's many of you all that's sitting here today that's saying, you know, Pastor, I hear you, I hear you, but shoot, way out things are going in my life. You know, ain't no favor flying this way. Well, yes, it is. You just got to, you got to stop looking at what you can see and start looking at the greater picture that God has blessed you with. The greater picture. That's why some of y'all need to take mission trips so that y'all can see how other people live. And you can go back home and realize after you land in the United States, you can kiss the ground. You see why people kiss the ground? Because they realize that, you know, when you go live in the hut where there is no toilet, there is no running water, you'll realize that if you had one bedroom with one bath, uh, bathroom, that you are still blessed. You know, because God's favor is upon your life. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I'm trying to teach about the promise is yours. The promise is yours. And if you can remember that the promise is yours, you will act like kings and queens as you walk this earth. You act like kings and queens. You won't put your head down. You'll go in places and, and, and speak those things that be not as though they were. You will declare in your life things. And whenever God allows trouble to come in your life, everybody say, whenever God allows trouble to come into my life, he is promoting me. Okay? Now, you got to believe that. You can't mumble and complain when it comes. Just know he is promoting you. He is promoting you. God does promotion through trouble. You know why? Because he doesn't allow, I, I was, I was, I was uh, doing some editing in, in one of the chapters I was writing, and I looked at the children of Israel. The children of Israel moved into Egypt. Y'all know, everybody know about the story of the children of Israel going into Egypt? They went into Egypt. They were very happy because it was a famine in their land. They went into Egypt, and they got very comfortable in Egypt. They were, they were eating. They were, they were partying. They were very comfortable. But how many of you all know that Egypt was not their promised land? Look at your neighbor and say, Egypt was not their promised land. And you know how God had to move them out of Egypt? He put them in slavery. Because had he not put them in slavery, they'd have stayed in Egypt. But he made it so hard, so bitter, so that, that by the time Moses showed up, they were saying, get me out of here. Because you will stay comfortable in some place that's not your destiny. And the only way God can get you out is to bring trouble your way. So if you're going through trouble, don't talk about God, ain't, ain't, God is loving on you because he's promoting you 
to your next level in life. And he allows trouble because some of us will, won't move until God moves us. Till he shuts the door. Till he closes everything down. And you be trying to knock on that door and you can't get in nowhere. Some of y'all now have lost relationships that y'all been thinking, man, that was a good man. No, he wasn't. It was the best thing that ever could have happened to you. You didn't know it at the time. But you watch God do what he does because God has something better because you're his favorite. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm his favorite. All right, let's look at Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Am I making sense? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Who does the promise belong to? Who does the promise belong to? Who does the promise belong to? The promise belong to you. What is the promise that God has given you? Grace and what? Grace and what? Grace and what? Grace and what? You're walking in favor. God has given you grace and favor, and it is a promise. It is not a suggestion. It is a promise that you are favored by God. You are one of God's favorite, and it is a promise that he has given it to you. All right, let's look at, let's look at uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Verse 1. Everybody read the first two words. God's what? God's Say it again. God's Shout it again. Shout it one more time. God's promise. God's promise of entering his rest still what? It still stands. The rest he is speaking about, the rest God is speaking about is resting in grace and not working for your salvation. God doesn't want work from you. He wants you to rest in him. Have confidence totally in his blessings and his provision and who he is and what he's done. Everybody say, I have total confidence in God's provision for my life. Now, you got to keep speaking that when those bills come into the mail. You got to keep speaking that when your bank account is not saying what it needs to say. You got to open your mouth and say, I have total confidence in God's provision for my life because I am one of his favorites. Amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. <clears throat> Listen to what it says. God's promise of entering his rest still stand. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. Why then, pastor, if some of us won't experience it? Verse 2 tells you. For this good news, what is the good news? Grace. For this good news that God has prepared his, this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. The two people he's talking about is it was announced to the Gentiles just as it was to the Jews. All right? But it did not but it did them no good, the Jews, because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. He says, when, the, when, when, when Paul said, I told them, Paul says, uh, let me say it this way. Paul says, when I was preaching on, on midweek night, and I told you all that favor was over your life, and that God's promise is yours forever, he says, some of y'all, didn't believe it, and y'all want to experience the blessings that I'm sharing with you. He says, but there's some in here that got caught faith, caught this word, and you're going to see the blessings of God over your life. Now, where are my people that's going to see the blessings of God over your life? He, said, he says, the good news, that's gospel of grace. That God had prepared this rest, has been announced to us just as it was to them, but the but it did them no good because they did not share or mix it with faith who heard it. For only we, come on, read, read verse 3. Say that again. Say that again. 
For only those that believe can enter his rest. You got to believe that what I am sharing with you is the gospel that Jesus talked, uh, that Paul is preaching about. He says, if you believe what I'm telling you, favor is going to follow you and blessings are going to be over your life. And all you got to do is speak those things and walk in favor. Now, I, I said again, I will say it one more time. Just because favor is over your life doesn't mean that you're going to go through life with no trouble. But the trouble you go through, you can trust God's heart when you don't see him dishing out his hand. Why? Because you believe him. I believe him. Just like I gave the illustration a couple of Sundays ago. Josh knows how to work me. He knows how to get what he needs from me. But when Josh comes to me and asks me for the keys to my car, and I tell him, no, you're not ready for that. He has to trust my heart that I love him more than me giving him the keys to my car. Because he's not ready for that. There are things that we pray for. I was reading in the scripture today. Oh, this was so good. I was reading the scripture today that, that, that uh, two of the disciples uh, 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 came to Jesus and they made a request to him. They said, this is what the scripture says. They said to Jesus, Jesus, when you get to the kingdom, can, and they were two brothers. They said, can I sit on one side of you? And can, the other, can my other brother sit on the right side of you? And you know what Jesus said to them? You don't know what you're asking for. Because what they were asking for is to be nailed on the cross on one side and the other side. Because when he was going through the cross, he was going through the kingdom. And he said to them, you don't know what you're praying for. And sometimes you and I think we know what we need. And God's saying, you really don't need that. And so he closes his hand, and you think he's closed his hand to you because he's upset. He's not closing his hand because he's upset. He's closing his hand because you can't handle what you're asking for. And you got to trust his heart when you can't see him releasing his hand got to do that. You got to do that. You got to know that. So he says, he says, he says, oh, that was good. He says, for only we who believe can enter his rest. For uh, as for the others, those that don't believe, God says, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest, even though the rest has been ready since he made the world. He says, we know it is ready. He says, we know it is ready because of the place in the scripture where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from his what? From what? Say it for me. He rested from what? Let's go back to, e let's go back to uh, uh, Ephesians. For by grace are we saved through faith, not of the work he is talking about here is you don't have to work for your salvation. You can just rest in Jesus if you believe it. And, and, and if you don't believe it, he said you'll never enter his rest. He says, in other words, because you don't believe the message of grace, you're going to be trying to work out your salvation a long time, buddy. And the favor of God is not going to be over your life because when you present your works to Christ and say, bless me based upon my goodness, you don't get it. He said, but for those that can believe, he says, you are in, this is good, he said, you are in a, 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 a continuous Sabbath with Jesus. That means that Sabbath day, that's why we can worship the Lord on any day, because we're in the Sabbath 24 hours a day. <laughs> wow, is that good stuff? Are y'all picking up what I'm preaching down, what I'm putting down? If you understand, say amen. amen. <clears throat> he says, we know it is ready because of what? Why ain't y'all reading with me? Come on, because of what? where it mentions the Sabbath day. And if you caught the revelation of that, God created the, day, the, the earth in six days. He was showing you grace and works. And so in the sixth day, 
He rested because he went into grace. The seventh day he rested because he went into grace. And he said, now, because you believe in him, you are forever resting in Jesus. That's good news. That's good news. He says, but in the other passage, God says, they, who are they? Who are the people he's talking about? The people that don't believe. They will never enter my place of rest. So God rest is for, so God's rest is there for the people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. Disobeyed God is because they didn't believe in God. They didn't believe what he said. He says, the only thing to stop you from rendering God's rest is when you don't believe. But if you can muscle, muscle up your mind to just believe God and believe that the promise is on you forever and that God's favor is on you forever. He says, baby, I'm going to blow favor and rest your way. He said, you don't, there's no need for you to worry about anything because God's got enough provision to take care of his people. You can lay in the bed and relax. Keep, talk to yourself. I know it. I'm the pastor, and I got to talk to myself sometimes. Sometimes I'm laying in the bed. I ain't got it all together all the time. I'm preaching what I'm trying to tell you that God's been downloading me. I'm laying in the bed, and all the bills and all the church stuff is coming and all the stuff, and I got to remind that if God called me, he has to have provision for me to do what I do. And I got to trust him. I got to stand in him. And I got to tell my mind, hush, shut up, sit down. Don't be talking to me right now. I don't want to hear that. I start singing and I start praising God because I know my favor is in God. I'm walking in favor. I am, I'm dripping with favor. My, my life is favor because I can rest in God. And you got to talk to yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, talk to yourself. You want, you're not crazy. Tell me you're not crazy. You're not crazy. Talk to yourself. Speak to yourself. Talk to yourself and tell, tell, tell the, look in the mirror and say, good morning, favorite. And tap yourself on the shoulder and know that God's blessings are over your life. Don't let the enemy tell you you're not blessed because you don't have a certain amount of money in your bank account. Stop looking at America. We look at finances as blessings. Finances are not blessings. Finances come if you work hard. You could be a drug dealer and have good finances. You could be a prostitute and have good finances. Finances does not indicate blessings. Blessings come because you have peace of mind, health and strength. You, you, you got, you, 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 come on somebody. You are blessed. You favor is over your life. And stop being sad about what you don't have because you ain't driving this or living here or paying this or got credit card. Stop looking at that and look at the favor of God that's over your life. Man, I went back, I went back and looked over my life. Uh, uh, Elder Brian, look about that. I looked over my life the last 10 years. Uh, where are my young people? If, you, if you're young, lift your hand. I expect you to lift your hands. I, I was expecting everybody to lift your hand. My older young people will attest to what I'm getting ready to tell you. Young people, listen to me. Listen to your spiritual father as I give you some words of wisdom. Don't spend all your time worrying about what you don't have. You'll end up 50, 60 years old and be begging for those years of 30 and 20. Do I have anybody in here to know what I'm talking about? I look back over my life 20, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and I, me and my wife were sharing this. God, we had so much fun. And we talked about all the stuff that we did, and we were broke as two church mouse. But had we spent all our time worrying about what we didn't have, we would have not been able to enjoy our life then. And we get older and find out we still don't have enough. And you'll spend your whole life chasing after something that doesn't exist, as I talked about before. Place called there. There's no place called there. Enjoy your life where you are. If you're in your 20s, enjoy your 20s. If you're in your 30s, enjoy your 30s. If you're in your 40s, enjoy your 40s. I'm in my 50s, and I am having a heck of a time. 
Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Y'all closed the casket on me. Just walked past me and said, that boy enjoyed his life. <laughs> yes, I, I take vacations. I, I have fun. We have fun. I enjoy my life because that's the favor that God has placed over us. He wants you to have a good time. Everybody in here ought to be taking a vacation. Pastor, I can't afford one. Walk down to Di downtown Disney and be your vacation. Get you some popcorn and sit down and watch the tourists and, 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 and watch the, go, go watch some free stuff. Enjoy your life. That's what God's called you to do. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And you hooked up with somebody that don't like to enjoy life, give them a choice. Come on and stay home. And I'll tell you how it was when I get back. Amen. Because the promise is on you. Look at your neighbor and say, the promise is on me. What are you going to do? Spend the next 10, 3, 4, 5 years moping, sad about what's not going right in your life? You better look at what's going right and not what's going wrong. Look at your neighbor and say, I got great stuff happening in my life. He says the rest is for, what, 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 what verse I'm on? I'm on 6. So God's rest is there. Everybody say, God's rest is there. Rest is there. The Bible says, God rest is there. God's rest is there. God's rest is there for the people. That's you. That's me. To enter in. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. They didn't believe God. So what happened? God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. Man, y'all don't know where to shout. Let me say that again, because I want some people to catch this. So God set another time. Watch this. What he said. Watch this. Watch this. What? Oh, this is so good. The revelation of this is so incredible. He said when he poured the children of Israel out of Egypt. Some of y'all ain't going to catch this. It was never God's intent to give them the law. It was God's intent for them to walk in faith and grace and favor. He says, I was going to do it until they got to a point that they wouldn't believe. And so since they didn't believe me, I had to put grace on hold. That's what he said. He said, I had to put it on hold and wait for another group of people who will believe it. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about me. Listen to what he says. So God's rest is for the people. Uh, no, seven. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the word already quoted. Today when you hear his voice, don't Harden your heart. He said when God is preaching and when you hear God's voice, God is telling you, come into the rest. You don't have to stay. When, when you hear the word of God being preached like it's preached in here, you better receive what I'm telling you and walk in the rest of God. He said, now if Joshua has succeeded in giving them this rest through the law, that's exactly what he's saying. God would not have spoken about another day of rest till uh, rest still to come. So there is a special rest waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest, all of the people who have entered into God's rest has rested from their labor just as God did after creating the world. He said, baby, you don't have to work to please me. Everybody that believes in me, everybody that believes in the finished work of the cross, everybody that believes, this is incredible news. He says, everybody that trusts in me, kick your feet up, Get you some iced tea and enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. 
While everybody else is worried about what's going on, you can kick back because you are his favorite. And he's promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Every promise that he has, it belongs to you. He said, the same promise that I gave Abraham now belongs and rests on you. Your children's supposed to be blessed. Your family's supposed to be blessed. You're, you're, you're supposed to leave an inheritance for your family, your children's children. You can do that. And the inheritance, good God Almighty, is not always money. My dad left me an inheritance. That's why I'm so handsome. That's why I'm so kind. He was kind. That's an inheritance. You may not be able to give your, mother, your children finances, but giving them an inheritance by taking them places and pouring into them and giving them the values of life and the values of God and the values of us. You can leave them an inheritance. It don't have to be money all the time. But God's promise is over your life. Your, your children, your children's children ought to be churchified. We got to pour that into them because that's what God's given us to do. God's given you a promise, people of God. I can't pour this law. No. And he did it without you repenting for it. You didn't get it when you walked down here and shook his hand. He chose you and called you and blew blessings on you. Then he put himself in the way and you bumped into him. And you said, ah, now I know who you are. And, he, and you received it. You didn't reject it. You didn't walk away from it. And blessings and favor. Because he says, because if you receive it, walk on in. It belongs to you. Is there anybody? Let me read that last part and I'm through. I close. I close. What am I need? Ten. For all who have entered God's rest have rested from their labors. What is, just as God did after the creation, what is the labor he's talking about? Labor to please him. For by grace we are saved through faith, not of labor, not of works, lest any man should boast. He said, you ain't got to work for nothing. He said, you believe what I'm telling you. You believe what I preach to you today. As, as Dr. Steve Brown said, if you believe what I taught you, you will walk in favor. Somebody give God praise today.